Hello, I'm Tyler Edlin. I'm here for another round of Brush Sauce uh, critiques from the members on this new challenge, which is the Grand uh, Journey, or Voyage, I believe. Now, to make a long story short, Adam's not here because he was here a week ago when I actually recorded all this with him, as we normally do. File was deleted. We couldn't reschedule, so I have to get this out to you guys. It's been long enough, so let's just do this. I'll jump in and I'll give you, like, the abridged version of what we both said. All right, so up first, we have Hugo. We thought this was a pretty solid idea, though the main problem stem, and I'm going to be very direct this time, is, is the color palette. A lot of your compositions down here, they're very well. I, we like a lot of them. A lot of them are working. Even structurally, this one works, but the problem is, is the color. It's just It looks like you have one tint of orange kind of glazed over the entire thing. It looks very shorthand. It looks very rushed as a result of that. So what we'd recommend, you know, you need subtle varieties of color in that. And without kind of kind of overpainting all that to show you, I'll bring up on screen uh, an example that does this rather well. That is a similar color palette, and that's from Dorje Bellbrook here, right? It's all kind of orange, but there's lots of subtle tones of oranges, of reds, of magentas of cool oranges, of neutrals, and that's the kind of sophistication that I feel that would really bring your image up to the next level. Now compositionally, uh, I recommended like, it, when it's kind of risky to run a center composition like you have here, and what I mean is your, your uh, designing principle in this is essentially a circle, which is fine, but when there's a circle of something, and Adam pointed out, you, we, the eye tends to look right through it, and what do we have through this? Nothing but an empty canvas, a, a blank void. So you want to fill that up. And so one way to do that would be to quickly kind of transform the composition a little bit. Show, you know, in the, in the background, multiple versions of this crane, you know, kind of going over and around, kind of like that. And then again, I'm just going to use sh quick shapes to quickly show this. Maybe another one back here, and this one's kind of going like that. And then change this one up a bit so that it has right something of a bit more of a of an angle to it. You know, something like that. So, right, we have this nice kind of funnel effect. Maybe even put that one kind of like right there. Have the big the big bucket right there. Right, you have the character, it's reading, it's light on dark, but this will add to the composition, it'll fix your problem, and then again, you just need lots of time rendering to adjust all those subtle uh, uh, color palettes. But, you know, overall, great job. It, the guy is going on a journey of sorts in this barren wasteland. If you could find some other little, little detail to put contextually in there uh, to really kind of help that narrative, you know, is, is the world good, is it bad, is, there some, is he hunting something? Some other kind of subtle subtext type of um, element I think would help it a lot all right a uh, mr. Coleman here former student of Adams all right so with this we feel uh, the main problem is a kind of like a lack of detail and and direction with this it, it lacks a certain amount of art direction and as a result of that there's little in this image that can hold the viewers attention you know, outside longer than a few seconds. You want this image to look and read well, really, really small on screen. So, primarily what, what the issue here is that even in your reference, you can see lots of nice, beautiful details on these trees, lots of lively branches. So one, one quick example of that, right, is, is again, the density of information. Lots of branches, lots of trees. It's just too barren, it's too plain, and you know, by extension, just too simple. Now, when you have, they're having the, the the character moving like that in that direction is good. I would put much more of a drag and emphasis on the footprints. And again, I would think about the shapes in the scene. How can you really utilize shapes of shadow, shapes of light, shapes of snow mound, trees kind of coming up, making patterns and rhythms, all the information that you already have there, but you need more. And again, to make a long story shorter let me show you a fantastic example of somebody that's doing what you're doing but you know very very well again here from um, Sergio Pablo's animation studios right look at this you could feel the form in the snow right it's lighter lighter there's subtle hue shifts it goes from lighter bluish purple to a more indigo there's hints of pink subtle you know throughout the background you could feel the yellow and the atmosphere coming down and the snow built up on the trees tucked into the corners above the branches all these little details and it, it just makes you look 
like that you took way too many shortcuts and that it's just unfinished. So get some good references. Go back to the to the image, pump it up to that next level. I I know you can do it. All right. Next one. And I'm sorry. I I know I'm going so quick, but time is of the essence these days. All right, uh, Anton, this is a great one. We overall were very pleased with it. Uh, probably just single singular imagery, like it really represents, you know, the Grand Voyage as the challenge suggests, the name suggests very, very well. Now, what we recommend is basically a huge kind of recropping and recomposing of your elements. There's just too much, first of all, there's just too much wasted space and way too much, um, yeah, space we can basically utilize. So. I'm going to start basically by kind of trimming off a ton of a ton of fat on this new one and basically moving up you know, various elements and bringing them into more you know, a more interesting place. So actually I'm going to do that. Things like this. So you have that ship. Ah. <laughs> Have this ship overlap it, which I actually failed to do, but that's kind of what we want to show here. Nice overlaps of shapes, and then basically when you when you recrop it, you know something something along the lines of like, where you come down here, come down here, and then again kind of come up there. See how? Again, if we remove all this information on the side, Anton, you can. It's going to bring us a lot more into the image. It's going to focus on a lot more of the important things. And then, secondly, right, all this is just very. It's um, very uh, eye-catching. It's it's very kind of repetitive detail. It it's almost like too pattern and textury for that, and it gets a lot of attention that it doesn't need. But besides that, I mean, it's a really kind of well put together image, and we liked it. So kind of condense your information and tell your story and filter out uh, what doesn't work. All right. Uh, hey, Adrian, it's nice to see you you know, back participating in these. Um, very signature and stylistic to your work. Uh, a few of the main things that stuck out to us is, again, how monochromatic and dead the color feels. That's a huge thing. If you look, in, even in your one uh, reference image there, there's a lot of subtleties to this twilight hour sky. And that's what it's kind of lacking. It's just one kind of shift of purple. And that's just not going to cut it for most cases. The um, the other thing is kind of how this horizon line is a little awkward to us. We were unsure of its intent. right? We could see it and I could trace it here. It kind of goes like that. Um, is there a specific reason? You know, it's not just right there or not just like right there on the horizon. You know, nice kind of traditional sense of one, um, as you can see in all your reference pictures. So it, again, it, that kind of comes off as a bit sloppy. Uh, so you want to make that very clear one way or the other what it's supposed to do. Uh, the second thing is kind of like the density of detail and depth. Now, given that, right, we have the foreground here with this character, that's a lot of information. We're right, we're participating in the scene. We're right behind this viewer. But if you look at the thickness and the width of these poles, they're equally as detailed as something like this in the background, right? Which, given you know the the image layout, that should be like a mile or two out in the distance. So when you have all these details, and again, you're using the same thickness of the railing, that's um, removing the emphasis of that. It's taking the importance of it away. And it's making it not, and it's killing the the 3D depth in the space of it. So that's something to be mindful of. Also, if you're going for a uh, you know a symmetrical center-based composition, and you have objects like these two ships here, look for opportunities to not make them symmetrical. Have like a big ship out here. Have a little ship kind of floating in there. Right. Make the pattern and the rhythm as dynamic as possible. All right. Uh, I believe that's kind of a majority of what Adam and I covered with yours. But yeah, mostly depth and, and detail and layout issues with that one. But overall, it's always a pleasure to see you there. Now, what we have here from Matt. Hey, Matt, thank you for submitting. 
this is cool. This is really epic. This is on the scale of epic that, that Anton had. Lots of information, lots going on. Now, with that said, the more you kind of put on your plate, the more you have responsibility over it. The, the more ingredients or the more things that are potentially can go wrong compared to like a singular character image with a simple background, right? A huge, vast difference in terms of complexity that we have here. And so... With that said, there, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of it that's working. Some of it's not working. A lot of it has to do with the readability and the details and the edge work. The edge work is kind of be key here. Like, look, if you look at the head of your character here, which is blonde on a dirty blonde on, on a gray background here, that all mixes together, right? It There's no value difference. So one of the major things we, we, we uh, pointed out is to make that head you know, very, you know, very readable against that background the second thing is that this looks like a very much like a rough color comp and a lot of professional illustration standards that they would have you go back to this time and time again so you can make the edges all very very clean you can have a very clear you know read on a lot of these forms right very very clear and then a lot of cleanup stuff, right? There's a lot of, you could see it, the, the brush strokes are going all over the place and that's happening all throughout. This particular area in here is particularly a little offensive <laughs> in just the regard that it, it looks so unfinished compared to some of these little details that are happening here. So again, polish, polish is everything for you and you can get polish by you know, really spending time cleaning up your edges and you know and so on but the other thing is like it's weird that compositionally that the characters are kind of just tucked off to the side it almost makes sense to have the character kind of be over here a bit right this character you know place here quickly show them maybe even having them overlapping and then you can kind of if necessary crop out you know some of the other elements but I, I think just having it uh, still run off to the side like that and have your and have your negative space over there would be a lot more beneficial but yeah I mean you have some good references you'd have to get probably even more and then lots and lots of cleanup all right but really nice idea and it's super ambitious hey Holt all right this is cool this is very this is like very clear what you're going for. So with that said, the main problem we mentioned with this is that it's it's much too muddy, right? It's kind of one tone of brown against one tail. Like you kind of colored it in black and white and then you overlaid blue for the sky, overlaid brown for the, the ground area and then kind of colorized and colored over green and blue for the suits. I'd be very surprised if you did something other than I just mentioned because that's exactly what it looks like. Now look at your some of your examples here. Look at Jeremy Fenske's right here, right? There's huge, deep, subtle subtleties to the sky. Even on something like like this one. I don't know the name of this this artist, but I, I like his stuff a lot. There's lots of deep, rich colors. There's there's oranges. And there's a lot of variations of that. You see less saturated ones. You see deeper ones. Look at all these colors that I'm color picking from it. There's a string of four right there and that's in the mid ground that's very distance you can see that there's this color blue kind of mixed into these as it kind of recedes in the background so you get this nice deep wash a, a, a great variety of colors this i mean you could color pick around you'll mostly just get right this shade of brown with like a subtle difference so use that to kind of guide the, the viewer's eye and to create that emphasis because there's not that much separating these characters from the background. And if this ship is important, I can get it off the side of the canvas. There, there's that, that one kind of, in terms of flow, there's kind of this going on. But like, why is this way off to the side? It seems like it's important. And on that note, it's kind of creating just a tangent riding up the entire side of that canvas. So I, get, I think the, the easiest fix for you first is you know, fix those compositional things, but separate what's going on between the characters and the background. And again, this is a really quick janky selection. But let's say, you know, even with this, if we make these a bit cooler and we, we darken them and we 
we fix their value structure, right? We get them a little darker. We can make them right a little more blue. Add you know, some hints of green in there. Even even some of these magentas. And then if we select the inverse, and we kind of group some of uh, you know some of those levels together, add those reds, add those yellows. Go in there and refine those color palettes. See how much more readable it is now. And that's that's with like a 10 second fix. If you actually go in there and sort that out, paint over it, reference, use your own reference there, color pick it if you want. But get that nice variety. Get those clean edges. Get those shapes. Those nice lustful shapes in there. All right. All right, Chris. This is a great. A great image, real up close. What's going on here? It, it, though we had, a, we did have a few suggestions. Now it's kind of tricky going this uh, close up into an image. You, ha you again have to kind of be careful with how you detail things and how you you lay things out. Now it looks like there's just like a, a neutral kind of warm light hitting this character. I, we we looked at like a lot of references of space and. Um, references for like that a lot of this I think would be better if you had ambient light that was cooler kind of coming in and backlighting a lot of this character and scene so I'm gonna first do that by just quickly selecting this like so that was too quick it's rather messy okay so something like this right if we come in we make it a little bit a little bit more blue kind of doing what we just did but right getting that first and foremost to, to stick out and get that planet to read like it like it's a planet like they have a lot of this night if it's atmosphere and there's light involved and stuff right you're gonna have this this aura to it this nice cool blue aura now I'm not sure the the right mode I want to use on something like this probably not that but yeah maybe this I get that blue haze in there from the planet and as it gets closer to the the sky right, right you're gonna have things like that basically to so get that nice blue in the sky like that and then basically take that off and get that to start to fill in some of the the character inside of these other areas and then that way too, you can also have you know, some of these areas of shadow kind of going on in there. That way it feels like there's a nice specific warm light hitting these areas of, you know, from inside the ship, hitting the character here. You know, it, it looks like the light's designed a little more intentionally. I did it again, I over blew it a little bit to get the point across, but that's something. Besides that, there was two other things. Anatomically, this just stuck out to us. It feels weird. Like, we don't know what his arm is doing. It looks kind of short and gnarled up. Like, I feel like like this would be the arm, like, coming out to here, and then this would all kind of make sense. So that's the thing. And then secondly, is it, it's a, there's a weird little disconnect between what this cube is. You clearly put it there for narrative purposes, but it's like I'm not kind of figuring out. We, we couldn't really see what that exactly was. So that's something to kind of consider to revisit. You know, why is he just, you know, blankly, mindlessly staring at the, the cube just floating in space? Is he bored? Like, give us a little bit more of that emotion, all right? Hey, Kara, nice to see this one again. This is overall great. It was um, overall really well done. But the same thing for you that we mentioned many times this week is the sky feels way too monochromatic for a beautiful type of <coughs> pardon me I have been sick all week which is another reason why we couldn't really reschedule that well um, it's part of the reason yeah I lost my I lost what I was saying pardon me guys mine mine fart um, golden hour lighting lots of subtlety deepness and richness in that and that comes from kind of night delicately layering in lots of of colors probably warm colors toward the uh, horizon 
like that, right? I've got to get a little bit more warmer, a little more saturated, and then it's going to kind of cool off. And the orange is going to transfer through the greens and the yellows in a way to get up to the, um, the, the cooler colors. So you're like getting a lot of these nice deep colors. And these are going to go all, more or less all the way across. So I'm even putting green. I'm even putting green into that, that landscape. So you can get all these nice, nice, subtle, subtle, beautiful colors. The blues, the purples. It doesn't have to be quite a literal, um, quite a literal spectrum like that, but one way of starting. And then you want to get these really nice deep oranges and yellows. So again, pass after pass getting these colors to read really, really deeply. And then transition up to those cooler colors. And then that way, right, when you get down to here, you can put a nice little sun of sorts like that and then you can get that sucker you can get that to really start to bloom in over right over these um what am I trying to say over these these background areas so what am I looking for something like this yeah see this would start to warm up back there So you feel that that light kind of start to bake over the various regions and areas, all that sort of thing. So I'm and I'm kind of going very quick with this. But right, you, you'll you'll feel the light bake over your your environment, and then you can what you can do is show that the light kind of catching the tops. Of some of these edges and forms, right? You see that some of the the building tops, the mountains, through the light catching a few of these towers, and you can use the light and where it's located to create that path through the scene. Okay, but you know overall it's very good and it kind of captures the spirit of the challenge. So our our favorite and our, our favorite was Anton's and our runners up was was yours, Kara's. Overall, they had they were the least problematic. They were the closest in tone and theme that we were thinking of, and overall pretty well done. So thank you guys for uh, submitting this month. I am sorry it took so long. Life happens, and yeah, I we're, we'll get the, the next challenge going again very shortly. Now, for those of you that, that have watched this that are not you know as involved in the community, these are very quick critiques. I, I just wanted to put a disclaimer. When I'm with my students and we're doing mentoring stuff, we, we go much, much further in depth than what we have here. But you know, we kind of quick do the quick fixes and, and adjust the big, dirty, offensive issues you know, artistically with these images. But again, thank you for submitting and uh, take care.